and the opposition capitalized on the fastball. But I just hey, Kevin, wonder, what happens? What happens if you are walking guys and then you're home run prone? Is that going to lead to good results? No, usually not. It's going to lead you to having an ERA above five, and that's exactly what we saw from Mister Savali there. But. You are Locked On Rays, your daily Tampa Bay Rays podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome into Locked On Rays, your daily podcast covering everything Tampa Bay Rays from game analysis to player interviews. We've got you covered with all the latest news and insights. My name's Kevin Weiss. And I'm Ulysses Sombrano bringing you expert analysis and passionate discussions about our beloved Rays. Whether you're a diehard fan who vividly remembers Longo's game 162, just like us, or you remember the Devil Ray days of Wade Boggs or Carl Crawford, we are here to break down every play, every trade, and every milestone. In fact, this is our sixth season covering the Rays daily. In every season, they've gone to the playoffs. So grab your favorite Rays gear, settle in, and subscribe to Locked On Rays, our YouTube channel, and other podcast platforms. You can also find us on X and Instagram at Locked On Rays. This episode of Locked On Rays is brought to you by Booking.com. Booking. Yeah, the right stay can make you a fan of any city, even your rivals. Check out Booking.com for your stay today. Kevin. What do we have in store for today's episode? Well, we got a busy show. Um, we are going to dive deep into the Aaron Savali trade. Yes, that did happen this week. The impacts of that. And also the Rays doing business, winning their fifth consecutive series. Do I have that correct, Ulysses? That is right. Five in a row. Can you, yeah. can you feel that heat, man? We can feel it uh, literally and figuratively as we are in Florida at the moment, taking two of three against the much improved Kansas City Royals on the road. So hopefully the Rays can keep that run going. But first and foremost, uh, Ulysses, I don't think you lost much sleep over this as he wasn't really your boy, I would say. Not many Rays fans, boy. Aaron Savali traded to... The Milwaukee Brewers earlier this week uh, opening up a lane for Shane Boz. That is very exciting stuff. And the Rays also acquiring in that deal Gregory Berrios, Berrios, however you pronounce his last name, a Venezuelan bump, if I may add, uh, one of the better prospects in the Milwaukee Brewers organization. The scouting report on him is that he is uh, very slick fielding, very acrobatic with the glove, and more of a contact-oriented, light-hitting middle infielder. Still very young, though, at 20 years old, and he needs to bulk up and add some weight. But he's a lottery ticket and may eventually turn into something. Uh, from what I've read and heard and witnessed, uh, it appears that Barrios would, uh, you know, the the floor end of him would be a reserve defense minded infielder, but he could be more than that going forward as well. Could be, could not be. Uh, this is the type of, uh, you know, a uh, lottery ticket, like you said, that you get in these types of trades. I, I don't think this is anything more than shedding some, some money uh, for not only this year, but next year. Cause uh, from what I read, Savali would be around seven million dollars next year uh, through arbitration. So that's a chunk of money. I know it yeah. might not be a chunk of money for other teams, but for the Rays, it is. So you you do that financial part first, and then the second one, really, this deal is just to open um, open up a lane for uh, the Wizard of Boz, uh, Shane Boz, mm -hmm. who will be returning um, very very today. He should be starting today if everything is uh, going well, or at least this weekend, um, this weekend series. But uh, yeah, it's it wasn't a great stay for Aaron Savale. I I know that some people are going to be hammering on the why did we trade Kyle Manzardo? Kyle Manzardo, I hope he kills it in Cleveland. Has not yet. If you have if you haven't checked up on on Kyle. In his 30 games in the major leagues, he has a 571 OPS. 
So it's not like he's tearing the cover off the ball. And hopefully he does. Hopefully he does. Uh, but this just, you know, I know that trades usually, Kevin, need years to kind of, you know, uh, give it some air, give it some breathing right. time to understand what actually went down and if it was be uh, beneficial or not for, for each team. I think in this case, though, we can safely say this wasn't – one of the good trades that this front office is used to be uh, to making. Yeah. And at the time, I mean, we can't criticize the Rays for the move that we made. Look, you can't be a prospect hugger with each and every single player. And you had Savali dangling out with the Guardians, cost controlled two and a half years before he would be a free agent. He was extremely productive in the lead up to the trade with the Rays. And over his career, he had some ups and downs, but pretty consistent starter over those years with the Guardians. I mean, you could pencil him in and say, yeah, he could be our number three, number four for the next two and a half seasons. So it made sense at the time. Um, I mean, hindsight's twenty twenty, and you say it's not working out. Well, right now it's not working out with the Guardians and Kyle Manzardo. Now that may change in the years to come, but it is really intriguing and interesting to me because my assumption, them being the Rays organization and them being wizards, not just with Shane Boz, but with many of their pitching acquisitions, that Savali wouldn't lose a step coming yeah. to the Rays. And he might improve coming to the Rays. So um, I was licking my chops at the prospect of having him in a Rays uniform and being productive for the next couple of years. And of course, that isn't what happened. And I would really like to hear a in-depth, honest answer from Kevin Cash, Kyle Snyder, Eric Neander as to why it didn't work out because the numbers on the peripheral, that tells the story right there. You look at his ERA that he put forth with the Rays, the fact that um, he couldn't make it to the sixth inning very much. Uh, the Rays really, anytime he started, the Rays probably had a shot to lose that game. They were five and 12 in his starts this season while going 38 and 30 with every other starter on the mound. And I have a little, uh, I wouldn't say conspiracy theory, but just trying to get into the mind of why Savali didn't work out in a Rays uniform. And a couple of my reasons or this um well one i mean just as far as him performing or not performing with the rays um he would be good be solid his first couple innings and then flame out after that so fatigue i don't know if it was a conditioning issue or maybe he's battling some underlying injury that we don't know about and he was getting behind in counts this episode of Locked on Race is brought to you by Booking.com. Booking. Yeah. With hotels, bed and breakfast, vacation rentals, resorts, and so much more on Booking.com, you might just find your perfect stay even in your baseball rival city. In fact, we know that Kevin just went to Boston, and I know that he used Booking.com. How, how did that work out for you, Kevin? Oh, it was amazing. Best trip of my life, and uh, Booking.com can be credited for that. That's right. And you can do that, too. So the right stay can make you a fan of any U.S. city, even your rivals. So today, go to Booking.com on the site or on the app and get to know those rival cities. We might not like their teams, but we can definitely like their city. So, again, the right stay can make you a fan of any U.S. city, even your rivals. Book today on Booking.com on the site or in the Booking.com app today. Passion, drive, and patience, that is the formula for winning championships. It's also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always Find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money is returned to you because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber and not cashola. 
With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. So go ahead, do it today. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit is only available to U.S. customers. And that forced him to throw the fastball and the opposition capitalized on the fastball. But I just hey, Kevin, wonder, what happens what happens if you are walking guys and then you're home run prone? Is that going to lead to good results? No, usually not. It's gonna lead you to having an ERA above five, and that's exactly what we saw from Mr. Savali there. But I also wonder if it's a little mental psychological as well, because let's remember Aaron Savali had spent his entire career in the Guardians organization since 2016. Mm-hmm. And then in a matter of moments, he's traded the Rays organization, and that means an adjustment to a new pitching coach, new catchers, new defensive scheme, new players, maybe added pressure that he had to face as well, knowing that, hey, you've got to kind of be a little bit of our savior here. We're adding you for a reason. And, you know, also, perhaps, uh, that's Stu Sternberg calling. Stu, I, I can't take the call right now. I'm very I'm very sorry. We're, 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 we're attending to business right here. Um, maybe just a tougher league as well. Uh, instead of pitching in the AL Central, now you're facing the the big bad AL East with a lot of boppers. So that's just kind of my mindset as to where some of the reasoning why Savali didn't work out in a raised uniform. No, I mean, it, it's, I like the last point. I mean, all, all, all fair points, but the last one is competition, right? Like who are you yeah. going against? Who are you really going to be putting those really good numbers? Oh, the AL Central, who, 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 who are you really facing in the AL Central? So, you know, it's a very different division going from the from the AL Central to the AL East. Uh, different ballparks, and it's it's just a different type of competition. So it didn't work out with Savali. It, yeah. it really is kind of a head scratching thing because we're so used to pitchers from other franchises just getting better by just wearing a raised uniform and, and knowing what Kyle Snyder and their front office can unlock in these pitchers that they find. It just wasn't meant to be with with Savali. But even though the trade, I think you can qualify it as not working out. Um, I think that today, without Aaron Savali and with the integration of Shane Boss, this team just got better. Uh, so honestly, like I think we shouldn't, you know, you can have the takes that you want for the trade. And, and they're all completely fine. Everybody has an opinion. But for me, the big takeaway from this is that this team just got better, people. You yeah. don't have Aaron Savala, and now you have Shane Boz. Like, this team essentially got better. And I know that Shane hasn't pitched in Major League Baseball since 2022. But what he has done in Durham in June has been very, very impressive. That's 23 innings, only allowing 20 hits. Guys, he's only around four runs, no home runs, 10 walks, um, a bad opposing a batting average of 233. I'm I'm really excited for what he can do. The one thing I would be worried about, Shane, would be okay, can you control those nerves? And if you can, what about the strike zone? Yes. That's the thing. Don't don't give up free runners. If you can keep your composure, I think the stuff will play regardless. That that's just the thing with Shane. It's been a year plus that you've been in the majors. You've worked really hard for it. Keep that pressure down so that your control and command of your pitches inside the strike zone is effective. We have uh, more to discuss, Ulysses, but want to mention this uh are you watching fox sports or espn on your tv all day have to turn down the volume with all that shouting well go ahead and make the switch to locked on sports today it's a free 24 7 sports streaming channel programmed for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming and shouting we try not to scream and shout here uh neither do the other locked on sports host uh locked on sports today brings you can't miss analysis opinions and news streaming 24 7 on youtube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. It is part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every single day. Yes, and uh, it's kind of a win win win, as you mentioned, Ulysses, because you remove Savali from the equation, you add Shane Boz to the rotation, you save millions of dollars, 
and you add what seems like a pretty promising prospect in uh, Mr. Barrios. Uh, at the time of the deal, MLB Pipeline ranked him as the number 21 prospect in the Guardians organization and fan graphs. This might actually be a topic for a later date. They recently released their top raised prospect and he's penciled in at 16th at the moment. And maybe this is a little foreshadow that the Rays uh, don't have plans to bring Wander Franco back. And we're just going to try to load up on middle infielders and shortstops. And hey, if Carson Williams doesn't work out, we can move on to this other guy. If he doesn't work out, we can move on down the line and try to figure out some sort of deal. But again, uh, Barrios, you won't see him in a Rays uniform for quite a while as uh, he's still just 20 years old. He still uh, needs a lot of work to add size to his frame. And I believe he was sent uh, to Bowling Green to further his development development there. Now, maybe, you know, if the Rays really wanted to get cutesy with it, we talked about Savali struggling, um, you know, later on in starts and possibly being an endurance, yeah. stamina, fatigue, conditioning issue. I mean, if, if the Rays really wanted to try to maximize his ability and maximize his team, maybe you take him out of the rotation have him be a bulk bullpen guy and then roll with Shane Boz in the rotation. Uh, uh, yeah, but you know, I've been looking at the game logs for Shane in, in June, he hit five innings twice. He hit six innings, uh, only once. So I, I do see a scenario where, yeah, Shane is being given the ball to start the game, but don't be surprised if the first three to five outings, they keep him to four innings. Yeah. I would not be surprised at all. And you know what? That's okay. Like the team is better with Shane Boss than with Aaron Savale, even if Shane Boss is only giving you four innings. Because guess what? If you keep on a four innings in the beginning, you are saving some bullets that you will hopefully need late September and October because this team is rolling five series wins in a row. They're above 500 once again. Can you keep that foot on the pedal on the gas and 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 really gain some momentum? Because what we said before is this team has the raw material to make it to the playoffs, but they have to start now to gain some momentum and gain some ground on other teams that may be flailing and some others that are surprising uh, their season, their turnaround. The Houston Astros were considered dead by some people it never was by us because we know what the houston astros can do and they've turned around their, they turn around their season and, and they're not kind of looking um uh, at the rays with the record very similar yeah. so it, it's it's going to be tough man now as far as expectations for boz are you thinking era under four 60 to 75 innings the rest of the year is what's your projection for him from now until hopefully October? Definitely less than 100 innings. I don't think he's going to touch 100 innings. Um, now, how they how they make that math work, that's going to be tough. Maybe 100 in, I'll, I'll say this. Less than 100 innings in, in, the, um, in the regular season. Uh, yeah. if, if, if he used in the playoffs, hopefully, then, then he can cross that. But... Uh, I, I think in the beginning they're going to really take care of him. Four innings, mm -hmm. and if and if three innings is with a high pitch count, then he's out at three innings. Right. I think they're really going to take care of him, and the bullpen is going to be heavily used in his first outings uh, on on the days that he pitches. Right. Now, as far as performance wise, ERA anything under four, I think we would love it. In fact, just by comparison's sake. If he's just better than what Savali has done, and I think Savali, uh, once he was traded, he was pitching at a 5.07 ERA this season. Right. So anything better than that, you're already giving your team a a, a better chance at winning. Yeah. So hopefully, though, it's a little bit better than that. I would think if it's under four, just to speak about one category, one stat ERA, uh, and not a 1,000, uh, Yes, if you're talking to ERA, I, I would love it if it would be under four. Here at Locked On Race, we pride ourselves on getting you the latest news for the race, whether it's the offseason, the draft, spring training, or the playoffs. It's year-round. And you know what else is year-round? 
collection season. So just because the tax season is over, it doesn't mean that the IRS will stop coming after you for unfiled taxes. But guess what? Tax Network USA can help you with that. With over 14 years of experience and an A-plus rating by the Better Business Bureau, they have saved clients over $1 billion in tax debt. Kevin, quickly, what can you do with $1 billion in the Tampa Bay area region? I can build a new stadium. That's right. Stadium. You, can build a, you can build a new stadium with a billion dollars. So whether you owe taxes, have complicated matters that require tax planning, or finally hit that parlay this season and need help correctly filing, call 1-800-549-1000 or visit TNUSA.com slash locked on. And be sure to mention locked on Rays at checkout and you'll receive a $250 discount off their services at Tax Network. Again, TNUSA.com slash locked on. All right, time to tell you about Ibotta. Ibotta is a free app that lets you earn cash back every time you shop, earn on hundreds of items from groceries to beauty supplies, even toys. So you can make sure you're beating inflation no matter what you are purchasing. The average Ibotta user earns $256 per year. That could cover the cost of an entire shopping trip, that flight you've been eyeing, or the fancy dinner you've been craving. Ulysses, what would you do with 256 extra uh, dollars? I would uh, definitely buy things online. I'm kind of uh, that kind of guy. Okay, yeah, fair enough. Uh, other apps give you points that really don't amount to much, but with Ibotta, you earn cash back that you can withdraw to your bank account, PayPal, or gift card. Simply add offers in the app, upload your receipt, and voila, your money is returned to you. You can save on over 2,400 brands and shop at over 1,000 retailers, including your favorite grocery stores, Lowe's, Macy's, Sephora, Best Buy, and beyond. So it's time that you join the over 50 million users who use Ibotta to earn cash back every time they shop. Right now, Ibotta is offering our listeners $5 just for trying Ibotta by using the code LOCKEDONMLB, L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N-M-L-B, when you register, just go to the App Store or Google Play Store and download the free Ibotta app to start earning cash back and use code LOCKEDONMLB. That's I-B-O-T-T-A in the Google Play or App Store and use code LOCKEDONMLB. Look, I think if you're a Rays fan, you have to be ecstatic about Shane Boz making his re-debut, the second act, Shane Boz 2.0, because... Based on what we've seen recently from him in Durham, he hasn't lost a step since he made his MLB debut, what, in 2021 now? It's yeah. been uh, been some time, and he's still got it. He's still got all four pitches, his four-seamer. He's getting to 97, 99 with movement. That's his bread and butter. Then you have the slider, the curveball, the changeup after that, and... I think that you're going to see what you saw from Shane Boz previously, where he throws with confidence, he throws with poise, he's got that easy, effortless delivery. It's almost like when you watch him throw, whether it's a 98 fastball or a slider, it's like he's throwing catch with his dad, like yeah. it's warm up pitches. Yeah. And that makes it really, really difficult on an opposing hitter plus his is tunneling and all that. But um, I, I see a guy that when the rays are comfortable, comfortable working him deep into the six, maybe past the six, he won't lose the life on his fastball or off speed pitches. Um, there was a recent outing in Durham where I believe it was one of his uh, 10 strike outings, believe it or not. And he threw 97.2 on his 81st pitch. So awesome. he seems like a guy that's going to be ready. And he was locating and commanding all his pitches. And I think that he should be able to use all his pitches as out pitches uh, if he decides and chooses to go that route. So um, oh, he definitely has a swing and miss stuff. I mean, oh, yeah. in, in three innings, he can strike you six. And in, in five innings, he can strike you out seven times. Like he is a guy, again, this team, you can have any opinion that you want on the Savali Manzardo trade. Whatever you want to do it, leave it in the comments. Right. But again, the Tampa Bay Rays 
are now better with Shane Boz in the 26 men roster than they were with Aaron Savali. Oh yeah, for sure. A hundred percent. And, um, yeah, there's another point on uh, Shane Boz that I was going to make, but I lost my train of thought that happens when it's on a Friday during the, uh, July 4th weekend. Oh my gosh. What was I going to say about Shane Boz? Just that, uh, we should be excited for, for what he can do. And, um, yeah, it's, you know, and then when you bring Jeffrey Springs eventually back into the rotation, then you're really in business. Oh, here's here's what I was going to say on Shane Boz. I think that um, him also being unfamiliar territory and terrain for some of the teams that he'll face should give him hopefully a leg up. I mean, it could work a couple of different ways. Sometimes we see young pitchers get bounced around, but uh, because his stuff is so lethal and there's not a huge playing deck against him, that may allow him to roll out and, and have a, a masterful masterful performance against the Rangers and some of the other teams coming up, at least first time through. First time that the Rangers see him, first time that the Yankees see him, first time that the Orioles see him, so on and so forth. And also, like sometimes you need like a little added adrenaline to the uh, to the team. It's 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 going to be yeah. really good for these guys that saw him debut to see him back uh, after after so long. And the new guys, they've heard about him, so they're going to be excited to see what he's to what he's got. And that youth, that irreverence, that uh, youth uh, plays with man. I think it's going to be fun. I'm. I, I think this is probably one of the best things that has happened. Yeah. In 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 the 2024 season, and not a lot of great things have happened. Right. Uh, I think on the podium is definitely City Connect. <laughs> That's yeah. definitely on the podium for me. Uh, this is for me seeing the return of Shane Boz, and then what could happen? You know, if, if this yeah. happens to Savale, we, we've talked about it. Is Zach Eflin maybe the next guy? You know, eighteen million dollars in twenty twenty five. That maybe that little bit be too steep for the race to pay. Can you make a move for Eflin plus somebody else? And I'm at Rosario or whatever, and yeah. package that in to finally get what you desire. What we all desire is a good catching prospect, a good catching young player. Can you get that from? a quality starting pitcher like Zach Eflin plus a utility player like Ahmed Rosario or whatever the co the combination package is. Because if the Rays do need something on this team to be a little bit more competitive than they are right now, would be a good hitting catcher. Right. Yeah, and I think that, look, no disrespect to Eflin, but I think the Rays do the algebra with that and say, is he really good enough to be deserving of the remainder of his $11 million contract this season when you have other teams out there that are fighting for starting pitching and you can really get uh, a good haul in return. And then, like you mentioned, his salary jumping up to $18 million next year. I think he might be the next guy on the list that the Rays try to wheel and deal, whether it's packaging with a Phil Maton, a Sean Armstrong, a Med Rosaro, whatever it may be, uh, that might be something to look at. And I guess uh, in the meantime, Shane Boz will have to uh, study up next to Eflin because Eflin, uh, based on his comments, actually a little bit surprising to see him so um, forthright here on Savali being traded. He had this to say, quote, it's never easy losing such a good player in person. He's brought so much to this team, chemistry wise, leadership wise, talent wise. I'm freaking sad. Honestly, I love Siv. Being with him last year was just it was a pleasure to play with him i mean that's that's a leader i mean he was he was brought in to be a leader and then last year he became the leader and he didn't know that that was going to be be placed upon him but that quote right there speaks to how he's in the clubhouse i mean that, that's exactly what you would yeah. expect somebody that leads the clubhouse to say so good for zach elfin to to say that but you know very soon guys could be saying that about him because again 100%. you need a space for Jeffrey Springs, who's going to come back. And you'd also want to save money and get a very good haul yeah. in this trade deadline. So it just seemed like Zach Eflin would be the next guy up. Well, let's remember, this is a team that is now one game above 500. One game, baby. One baby game steps. above 500 and highest payroll in franchise history by a massive yes. margin. So that is something that uh, I'm sure the powers that be. Stu actually called me on both my cell phones here. Stu, you got to 
gotta settle tell in. Okay, give me a minute here. We're trying to talk about Aaron Savali, Shane Baz, and uh, the Rays taking two of three from the Royals. Um, man, Stu, come on, be respectful sometime. I know you want to have that dinner date at that steakhouse unnamed in St. Petersburg. That will happen eventually, but you got to be patient for the next five or six minutes or so. That's right. All right. Um, speaking of that, let's go ahead and move on. All right. Uh, we're running up against the break here. Stu, be patient with us. Uh, just want to give kudos to the Rays for taking two of three against a playoff contender in the Royals. They won Tuesday's game five to one, lost Wednesday's game four to two, and then blasted out on Thursday for uh, a win scoring 10 runs. Uh, Ulysses, what was your main takeaway from the series that was? The main takeaway is that they could hold on, uh, especially that that last game, 10 to 8. Very entertaining ball game. Sometimes this season we've been really worried about the offense and the pitching having to do everything. I know Perry feels the same way. And, yeah. Uh, it, 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 it was nice to finally see how the offense can support an Eflin that kind of struggled a little bit, but competed and, and, and they came through for him. So that was my main takeaway that they were able to do that. And guess what? Our July MVP update, Randy Rosarena in July hitting a 718 OPS, but your boy, Brendan Lau, uh, OPS of 1.345. So uh, that was very impressive. Yeah. That's my big takeaway here. Well, one of them is I need to get, a couple of bar callers need to invest in that. But yeah, Brandon Lau heating up at the right time, like I foreshadowed uh, last week, um, two home runs in the series. And those weren't cheapies. We're talking 420, no. 430 foot. Uh, he had three hits in Thursday's game. He's really doing damage against the fastball this year. And I think what's really helping him, we've talked about this on occasion uh, over the last couple of weeks, the improved play of Yandi, Randy, and the consistent play of Isak, Brandon being able to bat and sandwich between them, whether it's second in the order or third in the order, is really helping him out, getting pitches that he can drive and do damage to. Because you have Yandi, an on-base machine, ahead of him, and then after him, you might have Randy or Isak or somebody else, well, you really can't walk Brandon Loud to get to one of those guys. So he's going to see pitches to hit. So I think that rising tides lift all boats, and hopefully it continues for the guys that are supposed to be as productive, our all-stars, our standout players. That's what needs to happen, and it's just going to improve everybody else uh, beyond that. So uh, let's hope it can keep going for Brandon and others. And just generally um, just speaking on the series that was, um, you know, throughout the course of it, we saw some manufactured runs scored, situational runs scored, two out RBIs, sacrifice flies, scoring on pass balls, massive homers. So that was good to see. And hopefully it continues against the Texas Rangers, the defending world champions. How about that? All right. Uh, In the meantime, hope you all have a wonderful day. Stay safe. And we will talk to you next time.